Today we have the all new 2022 Toyota Corolla Cross. Finally, a good SUV, maybe, that slots between the RAV4 and the Corolla hatchback, not named the CHR. In this video, we're gonna take a detailed look at all the exterior features, the interior details, and get it out on the road for a test drive and talk about whether or not this is maybe a good RAV4 alternative or just good overall for its size. But let's go ahead and jump into it. Real quick before we get started, my name is Nolan. Thank you so much for watching. I do new reviews every single week. I also have a night video of this Corolla Cross if you wanna check it out. It's got some adaptive headlights. I think you'll like it. But let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Let's take a look at all the exterior details of this Corolla Cross. So starting with the trim levels, we're gonna get the L base, the LE, and the XLE right here, which is the top end model, but the hybrids will have newer models coming out a little bit later. The base starting price is gonna be about four to $5,000 cheaper than a RAV4. So keep that in mind when we look at all the features and details here. The grille is very similar to what Toyota has been doing, kind of a little bit of a RAV4-esque here. And then we're gonna get LED high and low beam standard on every single model, but the LED daytime running light is actually just with the XLE trim. You'll see the LED fog lights down there. Those are also on the XLE trim. Plus we've got an LED turn signal just for this XLE trim as well. And these have the optional adaptive front lighting system so they're adaptive side to side and I've got a night video showing that off if you want to check it out. And this paint color on this Corolla Cross is called Celestite Gray Metallic. It is like a bluish gray color. It's kind of unique. I think it's interesting, something a little bit different. And then the wheels are going to range from 17 inch steel wheels on the base model to 18 inch wheels like right here. The base model is just going to give you black heated mirrors but other trims are going to give us this turn signal in them right here um, on the LE and XLE. Plus, we even have the blind spot indicator in there as well. There is a smart key system right there. You'll also see that you still have the option of roof rails if you want to throw some stuff up on top. And you'll see the body cladding around the wheel wells and the bottom to give it a little bit more of a rugged look. Now dimensionally, this is about 175 and a half inches long, but it still has 8.1 inches of ground clearance, which is surprisingly good. It's only about five or six inches shorter than the RAV4 though. Rounding out the back, what do you think here? We've got LED stoplight standard, but actual LED taillight modules will be on this top XLE trim. They look pretty nice at night as well. You've got the Corolla Cross badging, all wheel drive badging. Let's dive into some more. Now as we move to the back, the cargo area, this does actually get a power lift gate optional. So the lower trims, all trim standard will have a manual lift gate, but this XLE can have the optional power gate and you've got a button to lower it and lock it from there. And then back here, there's about 25 cubic feet. It depends on which trim level you get or which uh, front wheel drive, all wheel drive situation you have. But you've got the JBL sub over there. You've got a little cargo light that doesn't help a lot, but there's an extra little storage space on the side. And then this is big enough to shove a gallon of milk and keep some stuff from sliding around. You also have a few different hooks right here. Max is about two kilograms, four something pounds, four and a half pounds. Those are good for grocery bags, cargo nets, things like that. So you've got those on both sides. And compared to the RAV4, it'll be about 12 cubic feet more or so. So obviously that's gonna be bigger, but this still is not bad at all. And then you can see you can get a tonneau cover there too. The good news is that a spare tire does come with the car standard, and there's a couple extra random little storage cubbies for random items. If you wanna lower the seats down, you've gotta reach up here and do it like this. But then it's a fairly flat transition from the back to here, and these seats lay nice and flat, which is good. So this does have good cargo space when the seats are folded. Now here's a look at Toyota's key fob. This actually does look a little bit updated compared to some of the others. It feels okay. It's mostly plastic, but on this vehicle, not a problem. It doesn't say Corolla Cross on the back like I believe some others will. If you three press the lock button and then hold the third time, it does remote start with the key fob. If you want to do remote start with the app, Remote Connect, that's only if you option up for the JBL sound system. But my least favorite thing about Toyota is a remote start as soon as the vehicle unlocks it shuts off entirely they do that on everything lexus does that too but with the smart key system on the top two trims push that button to lock it otherwise you have a sensor in the back and that works with the tailgate as well but not the back seats 
Now, as we take a look inside at these seats, you'll get cloth seats on the bottom two trims, of course, with just six-way manual adjustment, no lumbar support. But these ones are the soft tacks, which is Toyota's synthetic material. I like the way that the stitching looks on here. The shaping of these seats is actually pretty good, and they've got some moderate bolstering on the side. It's not just a completely flat, boring seat. It's nice and soft as well. The soft tex feels good. You've got 10-way power adjustment on this top trim, which includes your two-way lumbar support. The XLE will give you the heated seats. No heated seats on those lower trims, at least in the US as of right now. No ventilated seats, no memory settings, you know, things you probably wouldn't expect on this class, but if you're comparing to like the RAV4, or if you're thinking about jumping up, those the RAV4 can get those things. Steering wheel is leather wrapped on here as well. It is manual tilt and telescoping. It doesn't come out quite as far as I was hoping, but I think it does fine. Your heated seat buttons are two-tiered and they're right there. Overall comfort, I think, has been fine. The headrest, I thought, was a little bit far forward right away, but I've gotten used to it and I think it's actually okay and the rest of the seats have been just fine. Now, as we move to the back seat, quick look, the materials here are gonna be cheap and hard touch, but I love this bottle holder built into the door right there. It's easy access, easy to grab, but you don't have any down at the bottom of the door or any storage down there. And overall size, this is gonna give you four inches less total leg room than the RAV4. So keep that in mind. This is quite a bit tighter than it is in the RAV4. And there's some things that are a little bit different. So I have a car seat right there with an extension piece. This is a little bit far out for what a lot of you will probably have to do with car seats, but that front seat is uncomfortably far forward. So families, if you're gonna have car seats and rear facing car seats especially, keep that in mind. It does get very tight. This armrest is actually only on the top trim. That's another way Toyota cheaped out on this. They're definitely steering people away from certain models and you know trying not to step on the RAV4, but you only get this on the base or on the top XLE trim. One bonus though is that these air conditioning vents are standard on every trim. That's fantastic. I didn't even expect to get AC vents in here. You know, once upon a time, a few years ago, the RAV4 didn't even have rear seat AC vents, and then they're really hard to see. They're tilted down, some people might not even realize they're there, but you've got two USB charging ports, a type A and a type C. Just for reference, I'm five foot nine, sitting behind where I like to sit at five foot nine. I've got good foot space, actually. I like having the foot space, that helps a lot. Not a ton of knee space, but enough to make it okay. It's just the car seat situation is the biggest dilemma for me. Headroom is good. I mean, you've got good headroom in here. There's a swoop up, which helps to give you plenty of headroom. So. It's spacious enough, just probably not ideal for families with car seats. Now let's hop into the interior. I'll give you a good look at all the features and details and what each trim level is going to get. First of all, starting over on the door, you've kind of got this huge panel up here. This is a soft touch material, which is very welcome. You've got a soft padded armrest right here as well. And then this big grab handle, this is like a hard plastic. Uh, the RAV4 gives you a little nice rubber backing here, but this one doesn't but you still get a big grab handle. There's no like slot to like store something or to actually grab, but you have this handle. Then there's a little storage down here, a bottle holder right there, and a big mug like this fits in there pretty easily. And then this is push button start, foot on the brake, push button right there. And this has a very familiar vibe. I mean, it's a very much a mix of Corolla and RAV4, more so Corolla. I mean, this is the Corolla Cross after all. All your steering wheel controls are easily laid out. You've got information controls, you've got cruise control, distance pacing, cruise control, audio, all of that on there. And then up here, the display is gonna vary depending on what trim level you get. You'll get a 4.2 inch display on lower trims or this seven inch display on this XLE. So there's a little bit of information. It's not quite as customizable as some. It's not like a full on digital display, but you can mess with some of your settings on here to customize your safety settings and even change, let me show you, you can even change the layout of this particular meter. So I had it in digital, you can have it in analog, so it looks like that. So you have a couple different options. Coming over here is where things are gonna be a lot different with the hybrid model. So this is Toyota's older infotainment system. It's nothing special. It's just kind of outdated compared to some. It is an eight inch screen on this XLE. Lower trims will be seven inch screens, but Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all of that will be standard. 
Currently on the non-hybrid model, it has to be wired in. So you do have to be plugged in for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but the new hybrid gets the latest multimedia with a wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Plus you'll be able to hook up two phones, USB or Bluetooth at the same time. But otherwise, you have all of these physical buttons on the side, physical volume knob and tuning knob. I definitely like that. The home screen can be somewhat customized as far as having like four pieces of information, two pieces of information, and you can somewhat change some of the information. While we're up here, let's go into reverse. And this is where things are weird. So we have dynamic lines on this top trim, but lower trims don't. They don't have dynamic lines at all. It's just a really subtle, way of Toyota cheaping out on you, not giving you movable lines on lower trims. But one more thing is you see the JBL right here. We have the optional JBL nine speaker system with the subwoofer. Plug your headphones in because I've got a recording of binaural audio. Let's take a listen. We don't have a 360 camera, but you get rear parking sensors on the XLE and front parking sensors, and you can turn those off or on in your information display behind the steering wheel. Air conditioning wise, the base is gonna give you manual, just manual climate controls. The next trim is gonna give you single zone climate, but we have a dual zone on this particular model. So each side can customize their own. I like the layout, I like the physical buttons. Everything is just easy to operate on here. Then you've got your heated seat buttons right there. One USB plug right there, and it's a USB-A. And there's no USB-C up here, which is a little surprising, but you can get adapters if you need it. Wireless charging mat down there, which is nice to see. That's actually on the top two trims, LE and XLE. Plus it could, it could double as a little storage area, and there's just enough room next to it to maybe put a key or something like that. Right in front of the shifter, you got traction control or your auto stop start to be able to turn that off. And then you've got an electronic parking brake and a brake hold button down here. Behind that are your bottle holders. So this works okay. I mean, the bottle holders are big enough, but they don't give you a lot of space if you have two and if you have to shift. I mean, everything's just in a tight line. I wish there was a little bit more width with this center console. It's just something that they could have definitely improved upon then you've got this cheap piano black plastic running around but at this price point not as big of a deal this armrest is also really small it doesn't slide forward and backwards but if you lift it up you've got a 12 volt power outlet in there and some decent space this whole entire this whole entire piece of the dash is like a soft material right here but then it's all hard touch up here i have not noticed any rattles or anything so i just wanted to point that out if you know you care about all the materials Decent size glove box and it's softly damped. Overhead, you'll get an automatic dimming rear view mirror on the XLE, but this one is actually an optional frameless automatic dimming rear view mirror with garage controls as well. Overhead, we also have some LED lights in here that are actually pretty bright. And then vanity light with a mirror, plus we've got the sliding piece of the visor. I wish the whole visor could slide out, but you don't actually get this visor extension piece on the base model. That's another thing you don't get on the base. And also right up overhead, just your standard size moonroof right there. And a quick note, visibility out of here actually is a little bit better than I was expecting compared to some other crossovers. The front windows are totally fine. And looking out the back, it's a little bit more squared off on those windows. And there's that window, it's not that bad. You know, I was actually pleasantly surprised. This is way better than the Toyota CHR. Now under the hood, as of right now, there is just one option, but there's another one coming soon, which I'll tell you about in a second. But under the hood right here, the standard option is a direct and port injected, two liter, four cylinder engine, 169 horsepower and 151 pound feet of torque. This comes with the CVT transmission standard. It is front wheel drive standard and all wheel drive optional, unlike the CHR, which could not be all wheel drive. So that's good to see. Efficiency is good at 32 miles per gallon combined front wheel drive, 30 MPG combined all wheel drive. However, the bigger and more powerful Toyota RAV4 has better highway efficiency for both front wheel drive and all wheel drive. Kind of surprising, but just to keep that in mind. The good news is that there is a hybrid model coming. If you want that, that's gonna give you more power and up to 37 miles per gallon. So more power, 
more efficiency, a great warranty as well on the hybrid. Something to look forward to. All right, y'all, we are now behind the wheel of this Corolla Cross. And in this video, I just want you to get an idea of what it's like to be driving this Corolla Cross. I'll kind of compare it to the RAV4 a little bit and some competitors, but I'll go through some of the details. And if you want to see a night drive and the differences with these headlights, be sure to look in the description below. Now, a quick note is that this comes standard with the Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. The hybrid model coming later is going to get the 3.0 safety sense an upgraded system a little bit more to it feature wise so keep that in mind so this will have the radar cruise control standard lane keeping system and lane centering standard automatic emergency braking things like that but my first impression of this is that it's it just kind of feels like a little bit you know it doesn't feel as solid as the RAV4 it doesn't feel obviously it doesn't have as much power um, the transmission is a CVT and they, they've come a long ways but this one still is just a little bit not so pleasant to drive and what I mean by that is the acceleration is just a little bit wonky sometimes it can be kind of noisy the banding effect of the CVT can be kind of jerky sometimes as well it tries to mimic shifts and gears at times but overall the driving dynamics in this are totally fine for this class of a vehicle I mean the handling is okay the steering is lightweight to where it's not heavy to maneuver and to turn so parking is a breeze staying in your lane is super easy too it just drives nice these toyotas have a good ride comfort overall this one ride comfort i haven't been in the lower trims but it's been pleasant most of the time in these smaller crossovers you start to sacrifice ride comfort they all kind of ride the same but this is pretty soft i'm definitely happy and content with the ride comfort in this corolla cross and the weird thing to me is this doesn't have like differentiating drive modes like an eco mode a normal or sport mode you have manual a manual option right there where you can move it to m and manually shift with the gear selector but this doesn't have real gear so it just i wouldn't do that pedal down So obviously not great getting up to speed. Merging onto the highway, not as good as some vehicles. It's not terrible, but keep that in mind because it's definitely not uh, engaging or it's not the easiest to pass people on the interstate. Now the one thing is, with, or on the highway I should say, now one thing with this transmission is it's very quick to respond once you're up to speed. So CVT transmission, pedal down. It doesn't, you don't have to wait for like a big downshift or anything like that. So, I mean, you get power pretty quickly compared to turbocharged models, like some competitors with turbos, those will have more torque. So you get a little bit more of a boost right away. So it feels a little swifter, but this is adequate for most people just fine. That hybrid is gonna have even more power. So be sure to keep that in mind. It's gonna have more power and better efficiency. You can probably kind of hear and see the tachometer maybe a little bit the banding effect of the cvt most of the time it's fine but if you really got to get on it especially from a start it's a little jerky kind of hard shift sometimes or hard sensations but otherwise the driving dynamics in here are totally fine especially for this class and this price the safety features that come standard with it there's actually pretty good visibility out of here as you saw just a little bit ago when i showed you the hole looking out the back now, one complaint that I do have with this is the road noise is really bad. I mean, it's worse than anything in recent memory that I've driven. We're on a rough textured road. There's a ton of road noise that gets in here. The RAV4 is not very quiet either, but this is worse. It's like Toyota puts zero effort into quieting this cabin. It's just really loud. Wind noise isn't that bad, but road noise is. So keep that in mind. But overall, I like driving these this for the most part for this class compared to the competitors driving dynamics are pretty good now to wrap things up on this 2022 Corolla Cross I like that Toyota is giving us a more practical option between the RAV4 and the smaller vehicles like the Corolla and you know it's kind of weird being called the Corolla Cross but it's very much like a Corolla it's definitely not nearly as spacious with its interior space as the RAV4 it's not that far behind dimensionally 
but the price is a pretty big gap, especially when you look at the base model of this one. This class of crossover has gotten to be really competitive, so there's definitely some good options out there, some that are better in some ways than others, and it's just a crowded area, and you're gonna have to test it out for yourself. It's not quite as spacious as I thought, but it's a good overall package, really, for this size of a vehicle. Let me know what you think down below. If you would go for this, the RAV4, or some other competitor to this Corolla Cross, thank you for watching. A thumbs up would be super helpful. Subscribe if you want to see more and have a great day.